I'm going to use my voice as long as I can, but I'm rigged up with all kinds of microphones so that if we have to stop in the middle and I can switch, we can switch. And thank you all for missing the Patriots game. Maybe you watched part of it first, I don't know. Uh, I want to announce the upcoming program, which is uh, Brenda and John Linton, who will be doing a program on searching for monuments, monument hunting, and uh, I'm sure that they will do a very good job. That's going to be October 13th, so I'm sure that's already on your calendars. Today's program is on the post office mural mystery. And my disclaimer, because I know that there are people in this audience who know a great deal about art, the Wadhams from West Hartford, um, I know nothing about art. And I knew nothing about this mural before I started researching it. So I will be happy to answer questions, but I'm not sure that you'll get a satisfactory answer. <laughs> so here we go. Between 1934 and 1943, the New Deal program was, of course, in operation making work for people, basically. And a lot of people think, including me, that the murals were all a part of the WPA program. They were not. They were given to the Treasury Section of Fine Arts, which went by many, many different names. And most of the time when you're reading about this, it simply says, the section. So we will go by the section. The section divided the country into, 19, uh, into 16 regions, appointed a local art expert, in quotation marks, to head up a group of interested citizens. Can you see the problem here? <laughs> Right here in Westerly, when they did bricks and murals, and I, and I know that you were very um, big in that, there was a discussion about whether or not we should do the front page of the Westerly Sun, because it said, Japs attack America. And we went back and forth between the town council and everybody else, should we do this or shouldn't we? A few years ago, when we had the contest for the granite um, sculpture at the railroad station, remember the flack about that, those of you that have been here? You know, it was a modern sculpture. Should it be a modern sculpture? Should it be something very traditional? So appointing a group of citizens to decide on a mural is not always the best uh, idea. So that meant that Washington had to be the final arbiter. Now that's fine, except Washington didn't know anything about local areas or what their tastes were. So how did this all start? Well, and I'm not going to do this throughout so you don't have to worry, just two of these slides. There were conflicting government goals. One was to provide money for struggling artists, regardless of talent. <laughs> <laughs> a worthy goal, a worthy goal. Another was to educate rural Americans, notice not urban, rural Americans about fine art. A worthy goal. <laughs> but they also wanted to cater to public taste. Another worthy goal. But what does this mean when you get down to, to nuts and bowls? Well, fine art means no nudes. It al there also was a requirement that you want, didn't want to do any classical art. You didn't want to do, you know, it was very, very convoluted. So it should ha have specific subject matter. It should not be abstract. It should have historic subjects, which represented real or imaginary events. And by showing a long chain of historic events, you could calm people's fears about the Depression, because overlying this all is the psychology of the Great Depression. The style of these murals in public buildings tended to be very cubistic in many cases, but don't go to um, Diego Rivera. Don't go there because he's a socialist. And so even though he was a cubist, you don't, you don't want to copy him at all. So you can begin to see what's happening. A lot of these murals flattened the image 
they, they were playing against the two-dimensional walls on which they were mounted in some way. Um, artistic license always played up against historical accuracy. That can be a problem. But most of all, people wanted up-to-date, modern, jazzy, technological subjects. So there were three Ps necessary for success. I can't believe this just did this. I tried for weeks to get it to do this. Oh, well. So the first one, the patron, the government, wanted good art to um, improve American taste. They wanted um, the artist to portray a local area, but you know what? The artist couldn't always get to the local area. He had to send, he or she had to send all his sketches, cartoons, and photos to Washington at his own expense. He had to buy the canvas, the paint, the varnish, the adhesive, because remember these are mounted in different ways on these walls. He had to hire a paper hanger. He had to hire a professional photographer to document the installation. Can you see the government working through here? Yeah. He had to submit color sketches to scale and, and we're talking many feet, for the government to keep in its files, which meant he couldn't sell it to the local library or to an art collector or, or someone local and make some personal money for it. So that was, that, the painter was really uh, in a tough spot. He did not receive any money ahead of time for this. And then there's the public, knew what it wanted and what it didn't want, and that differed from place to place. And most of all, we could say they wanted a positive, progressive self-image. So nothing negative, even if it were true about it. These murals were installed in courthouses and post offices and other public buildings long before we get to our story. So what were they? Technology. People loved machinery. They loved tractors in bright colors. Um, they often had a collective vision, the community had a collective vision of prosperity and you know, you could, you could harvest a lot of stuff with this modern tractor. Airplanes, trains, even stagecoaches, which were a little outdated by that point, but they showed movement, they showed um, a kind of a magic carpet to the future. Another popular, and I apologize for this, um, lack of clarity. Other communities wanted to highlight a local industry. So here's cheese making. You know, this says, this is who we are. This is home. We're safe. We know how to make cheese. And all those things going on in the outside world won't matter to us. Oh, reject this one. Even though it probably accurately portrayed um, Kellogg, Ohio, it's sad. Somebody's been hurt or somebody's been killed. So don't, don't, that's not going to help. People love to capture the beginning of their communities. You know, someone who was born there and got famous or something that was, happened only in your community or how your community began. So this isn't a, this is not a section mural. This is the one from the Westerly Middle School. But there they are, John and Mary Babcock, you know, landing on, I hope this comes up in Westerly Trivia, Donna. Oh, good, phew, <laughs> yeah. And it, it um, In modern dress. <laughs> in modern dress, yes, but that's okay. We won't worry about that. Uh, it gave people a sense of stability of people working together. You know, if they could survive being the first European settlers in, in this um, Indian-infested town, then, Westerly could survive forever. Um, sometimes they were rather idyllic interpretations of the past. And then we have kind of the generic, what could be wrong with this? You know, the bandstand. Well, artistic license is what's wrong with this. There were buildings, in, you know, kind of shabby buildings where those trees are. So the artist Marion Gilmore replaces this with trees, replaces the buildings with trees community did not object to that. Kind of insulated them, gave them this homey feeling. But they did make her take out a cannon and, some, and a monument that were in the front. And then 
they started to complain. So here's a quote that she wrote. One old Kaja very much wanted to be shown in the picture. I told him he could be if he grew a mustache. When I left Corning, he had started one. The band leader objected that I showed his pants unpressed and he always had them pressed before a concert. The assistant postmaster thought it would be nice if her dog could be in the picture. She left it basically with the types represented that were generic all over America. The farmers in their bib overalls, the women in their print dresses and white pumps, the old patriarchs featuring the grizzled mustaches, and the townies resplendent in their off-the-rack suits. Hard to see, but you'd think that that would please everybody. In 1939, the, the section decided to hold a contest. A rural post office in each state was to be selected to receive a mural, and Life magazine would print the winning sketches in the December 1939 issue. So here are the rules. Each winning artist would receive $725 which sounds good for depression times, except remember all those expenses. The section suggested local history, past or present. <laughs> present history? Ah, we have a little contradiction in terms there. Open to interpretation. 972 artists sent in 1,477 designs, and the December issue of Life magazine featured the 48 postage-sized stamps. So part of this ties in with the WPA plan. The WPA plan was to build rural post offices, build courthouses, give people work, and of course they were perfect places for murals. The only problem was Westerly already had a good-looking post office that had been built in 1912. Why do we want another one, right? A group of local citizens called the Citizens Taxpayers of Westerly for some reason had formed a group to lobby for one of these new post offices. I don't know why. But anyway, they'd been agitating for a new post office. The executive board of the Citizens Taxpayers Association had become so excited about this concept of a mural for Westerly that they sent away for the rules of the contest. Always dangerous when people know the rules. They were ready. They may have been ready, but at the time of the contest, the post office was still in its draft stages and no money had been allocated for the mural. We have a problem, a problem for the artists also. What, how do you do a mural when you don't know what the post office is going to be? Well, most of the post offices looked like this. Aren't you glad we didn't get one? <laughs> so on the side wall, um, and this is about 42 feet long for your, for your um, sense of how big it was. So on the side wall, whoops, this was what the typical new post office looked like. You had your, post off, your postmaster door in the middle flanked by two uh, bulletin boards with the, you know, the wanted posters and the notices on them. And sometimes that was a bit of a design challenge because you had to go up around that little hump in the middle. And, um, but, but it was okay. You know, people were basically okay with it. Well, here's the westerly one. <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> right? Look at that space. And we already, we don't have just one door. We have two, one for the assistant postmaster. So we, we had a better post office than the government was building in, in this time period. I just took that picture a couple of days ago and I thought, somebody should do something <laughs> with that. <laughs> it is kind of blank. So, once again, the artists are still um, working. Now, most of them, again, featured uh, some kind of, of subject that could be considered a generative force in American life and history. These are studies for Pony Expresses. Well, obviously, we weren't going to get the Pony Express, at least we hope not. 
But the concept is this, speed means progress. Journeys have always ended and dreams come true. Murals could show a flow of events and often did. Now Wakefield had gotten a mural, N not from the contest, but before that. Do you like it? There's a lot in that, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, it even has it even has multiple titles. So sometimes you see it, South County Life in the Days of the Narragansett Planters, and sometimes you see it with another title. People loved it, okay? The Providence Bulletin writes glowingly about it. Um, the Westerly Sun writes glowingly about it. And I, and I won't read a, a whole lot, but I'd like to share some of this positive reception. You see whether 2019 standards would have the same thing. It is intended to depict South County's past and portrays the 18th century days of South County planters who counted their wealth largely in slaves and rum. It is entitled, here's the other title, Economic Activities in the Days of the Narragansett Planters. It symbolizes the basic activities among the planters of Narragansett County, both stock and dairy, from which they built their wealth and culture in the early days of South County. The slave-owning civilization reached its flower at this end of the county about 1750. There is a group of cattle, horses, and slaves in the center and foreground of the design. Here are symbolized their breed for export of the famous Narragansett Pacer, one of the world's finest saddle horses, draft horses, and highly prized dairy cows. Narragansett cheese is not forgotten. I, I don't know where the cheese is, because I can Oh yeah, with the slave. Oh, okay. I never knew Narragansett was famous for cheese. In the center is a brightly dressed planter astride a fine horse. Of course, in the background are the sailing ships riding easily at anchor, ready to carry the products of the South County to distant ports and return, bringing slaves and rum. The raising of sheep, which spread to the woolen industry of New England, the growing and grinding of green corn for Rhode Island Johnny Cake meal has not been forgotten. There are outcropping rocks and boulders which are characteristic of our countryside and ocean as well. That's just a part of the glowing reaction that this got. So if Wakefield was so happy with its mural, then you would think that Westerly would be happy with its mural, right? I mean, you know, we're neighboring towns. So Westerly first saw the winning mural in Life magazine. Whoops, here's all 48 spread over two and a half pages, so you can imagine they were pretty tiny. And I'm not leaving the slide on long enough for you to figure out which is Westerly's. So here are some of the sketches that survived that were submitted as, uh, in the contest. I'm presenting them alphabetically by uh, artist so that I won't prejudice you. This is by Bruce Mitchell, don't know much about him. He um, was born in Scotland, died in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Notice that he has those, here's my art comments, ready? Strong vertical and horizontal lines. Do you like that? Okay, good, okay, good. Uh, so much so that they kind of detract from the rest of the, of the uh, sketch. And very few men in it. You've got some down in the quarry and some are just kind of like stick figures. And then these two men up here in the, in the foreground. But he does make an attempt to kind of show the granite industry. The second one is a New York City abstractionist named Leo Rakin. He was known for his bold colors, but this is a sketch so you don't get the, of charcoal on paper, so you don't get the, the sketch. But um, notice that he's got a real mixture of technology and industry and people, and, and how about that granite block hanging right dead center, you know? And it's interesting to me that over on the left-hand side, the people look as though they're just kind of standing around, um, whereas almost everybody else is active. 
And Linda Chafee pointed out that the angle of those pneumatic drills would produce a, um, a split in the rock that probably was not what you were looking for. Notice how the Notice how these are vertical, but with the uh, drills in there like that, you're not going to get that vertical cut. But it shows the muscles and the rock and everything else. Um, Paul Rudin, um, born in Germany, he became a sculptor and settled in Patterson, New York. Um, most of his sculpture is of animals, but I suppose this is the Depression, and if you saw a chance to make a few dollars, you know, if you were an artist, you... You, you tried. And, and he does capture a lot of movement in this picture and a lot of different stages of harvesting granite. The only uh, local person whose um, artwork survives is Alfredo Verricchio. He was born in Providence and died in Warwick. By profession, he was a lithographer, a painter, and a designer, studied at RISD and was president of the Gemcraft Company in um, Cranston, which I'm assuming is costume jewelry. Um, but look at the muscles. The, you, you know, those, those men are very typical, a lot of the people that you see in these murals. You know, the strong muscles, um, lifting things, doing things. So here they are, all four of them, and of course, I'm going to ask you to vote. I'll give you a minute to study them. How many? I beg your pardon? With the old black and white? Uh, the sketches that we have are, they're mostly charcoal, I think. It'd be different if they were in color. Oh, but they will be in color when they're finished. Oh, okay. Yes, when they're finished. Yeah. So try to imagine them in color. Okay. okay. So how many of you prefer number one? Raise your hand. Number two. Number three, number four. I think it's a. T I think number three has it. Okay. Does number four reverse? Yes, it is from the order that I gave it to you. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you are so smart. It was a matter of fitting them on the page. You know, I suppose I could have switched it, but yeah, yeah. Does that change your vote? They're flipped. Oh, wait a minute. Which one? Right for left. It doesn't matter. This one? Oh, oh, you're absolutely right. Why is that? You know, I use different sketches, and I'm I'm one. I don't know what happened to there. Just got flipped on the vertical axis. I know, but I'm why? I'm also going to point out something. Sure. Yes. If you look at number two and number four, and you look at the sense of tension and movement, even though the reality of the way those girls would have been handled should have been upright, there's much more tension and effort right. in that triangular design that's created. Yes. And that is part of the issue between reality and artistic license. And the winner is, are you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, what can we say? Um, we've got mountains, we've got a river, we have an overpass over the railroad tracks. Where did it come from? I think it came from the artist's imagination. You can show them a tunnel. Yeah, there's no tunnel. <laughs> and we've got this super duper train, you know, very modern and so forth. Okay, so it's metallic, some people describe it as. The sketch is controlled. Oh, listen to me do this. Ready? I'll read it. The sketch is controlled by a lateral thrust following the sharp plane of the railroad tracks. <laughs> yes, it is. A caboose, boxcars, and an updated steam locomotive wrapped in a streamlined shroud also describe a horizontal band across the design service, surface, etc., etc., etc. It is imagination. 
It, it's just incredible. Somebody even did the research to find out if any railroad engineers actually lived in the town of Westerly. And then, of course, you know, he's looking towards the future of whatever, and the mother and son are coming home. I mean, it's just too much. Okay. <laughs> well, at this point, the Westerly Post Office was still in the drafting stages, so there's no post office yet. The funds for the mural had not been allocated. So it was a fuzzy proposition for an artist to really know what to, to do. So maybe this was what his hometown looked at, looked like. Well, the Westerly reception from the Citizens Taxpayers Committee of Westerly. <laughs> Therefore, a vigorous protest is hereby registered against the placing of such a misconception and ill-advised understanding of this historical town and its leadership in one of the oldest and most substantial industries, a native product, granite. You notice that granite is capitalized. From the westerly sun. <laughs> it looks as if those who had a chance to choose some 45 murals for the post offices of the country had made the best selections possible for the other states and handed on to Westerly <laughs> what was left for it. <laughs> Westerly has no other path, it has a subway. It is doubtful if there is a single railroad engineer who resides in Westerly. <coughs> Westerly certainly is not anything of a railroad center and has no ambition to be one. The buildings are characteristic of a dilapidated Pennsylvania coal mine. <laughs> <laughs> The Providence Bulletin. There's a slogan put out by the Westerly Chamber of Commerce that the town is a good place to live, work, and play. The chamber will have to tack an addition to this slogan, pointing out that this is also a good place for railroad engineers. One more sentence. <laughs> oh, I missed some. Sorry. Uh, they unanimously agree it's included to make a man mighty homesick for very India. <laughs> And Frank Sullivan was uh, also the head of the Chamber of Commerce, and so you might, of course, expect him to reply. Okay. There is no overhead bridge at the railroad station, and never has been. It seems to us a more appropriate subject could have been selected for this New England town, where for over 100 years our citizens have found employment cutting and carving westerly granite, and later making four-color rotary presses for natural to national magazines and textiles and earn a livelihood in many of their first five industries. And you can notice he's not speaking just for Sullivan Granite, he's speaking for the textile industry and the rotary press industry, which I thought was nice. Now there had been a Westerly native, his name was Alexander G. Sawyer, who had submitted a uh, sketch that all of these groups agreed on and his didn't make the final cut. It was later displayed in the Westerly Public Library. I don't have any idea what happened to it. I, I've never seen it at the library, so I don't know if it's bitten the dust or whether it's tucked away somewhere where I didn't find it. There were 14 Rhode Island um, submissions, and five of those at least dealt exclusively with the granite industry. So it wasn't as if that they didn't try. Most admittedly did not have the artistic merit that Sample's design had, but, you know, Westerly wasn't necessarily looking for artistic merit. They did talk about or show the concern with the relationship of human beings and tools and work. So back to these. They all have something in common. They all have people who were eager to work. You know, you can tell that these men are throwing themselves into the job. The quarrymen's uh, hands hold the tools, whether they are pneumatic tools or whether they are the tools that came before that. They are being used by humans for human action. Some of the sketches are a picture guide to the quarrying process. Some show um, human might combined with the machinery. Each figure in the sketches 
um, grasps or holds or seizes or touches or grips something, holds on to it, indicating it in many people's eyes that this was not an individual accomplishment, it was a collective accomplishment and took many men in order to come up with the final product. The tools are less important than the hands, um, but all of that is, is uh, peripheral to the concept of working. You know, these were men that had jobs, they were being paid, and they were scared because we're talking about 1939 and for the previous decade the granite industry had been in decline. And so you find that uh, if, if this mural goes into, or one of these murals goes into the post office, you have the comfort of saying, you know, maybe the granite industry will come back. Maybe the depression will be over. Look at what we can do as a group. Um, perhaps wishful thinking at that point. Somehow, when it went back to Washington, Raken got the, the commission. And we are lucky that we have in Florida um, many, and, I've, and there's more than 20 of these sketches that he did, the figure studies for the uh, final mural. We think that probably he came to Westerly um, at some point. Anybody wish to comment on these? I have no comment. I don't even know whether I've got those in the right order because the second one looks to me, you know, more developed, but it doesn't have the pneumatic um, tool in his hand. I'm not boring you with all of them, but. Uh, sandblaster? I think it's a drill, probably. I think it's a sandblast. Two hoses. Yeah, it's uh, hard to know. I, I like the idea, you, you know, look at this foot and so forth compared to this one. It, you know, it's, it's an interesting concept. So here's one of his early sketches. Um, the compressors are on the right-hand side now. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. And there's your fellow on the far right, bottom corner. Yes, and I have no idea what he's doing because it looks like a rounded piece of granite. I, I, I don't understand that at all. Oh, it grows that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But I want you to look at those two big, heavy pieces of granite in the middle of the picture. Well, yeah, very dramatic. I mean, you know, you're just waiting for one of those um, pieces to drop. The, the guys over on the left, can't remember if I've said this or not, the guys over on the left don't seem to be as busy and as occupied. Um, and the guy lounging on the piece of granite, I have no idea what that is. And, I, and I'm not professing to know everything at all here, I mean, at all. So some of you might know what well, what he's doing. Another person has a clipboard in his hands, which might be accounting for inventory or something. The fellows looking at the flat piece look like they might be perusing a design question. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got mm -hmm. me, it's the multiple stages from conceptual to paper to then actual execution and stone. And, and I find, um, from a practical standpoint, in the middle there, you've got those drill holes, and, um, and no drill holes on the outside of the stone, you know, showing. And they have it at an angle. And at the angle, right. This is a different one, right? Because I think, didn't the earlier one show the drill holes on the edge of the rock? Whoops. Did I have another one? Yes. Whoops, there's the color. We'll, we'll, we'll skip to the color. So there's the drill holes, and that's, that's correct. I mean, when that piece of granite had come off. I still don't, I, does anyone understand this? Yeah. Glenda or somebody, John, do you, do you get that? I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. It couldn't be that. He's yeah. got a face mask on. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he's just drilling a hole. 
but would he be? He wouldn't be sandblasting in the quarry. I mean, that's what bothers me. Is no, you wouldn't be doing all of it in the quarry anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's yeah. Liberty to it is. And he did. Yeah. He got he got rid of that giant thing in the back. Well, I think he's I think he's holding the the top piece of granite. I have no idea how that big chunk is balancing or what it is. Well, yeah, you look at the color on the picture. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like one guy is holding up. One guy trying to up. That wouldn't happen. He's very strong. He's very strong. Yeah. But when you think about all the stuff he was trying to get into this, you know, he's done fairly well. Okay. But look at the guys on the left. They're doing something completely different now. <laughs> Guy in the middle still has his drill artistically placed on that angle, on that triangle. What's the equipment on the left? The compressors? Is that what that is? Yeah, that would be... Uh, oh, the jackhammer or the... No, the, the big metal. The big metal. They would be producing steam for the pneumatic tools. But they wouldn't have been there, you know. They they were outside in another building usually because there had to be fire, you know. There had to be fire to to heat the water to produce the steam. But but they are emblematic of that machinery and that technology. They look very strong. And as to those angular shots of the drilling, I think they're just getting their niche. Then they stand oh, Donna, and you're they so down. nice. They would start down. They have to get a niche. The well, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said maybe. <laughs> yeah. So here's the here's the final one, the one that was uh, submitted to to Washington, and the one that's in the Wolfsonian. This is uh, presumably to scale. And uh, you notice that that big piece of granite in the middle is now gone. Yeah. You notice the bosses are now in their suits. Down in the quarry hole. Down in the yeah. quarry hole. Yep. Um, and you notice there's a lot of bosses. Uh, there's at least three people in suits there. So they are uh, they're kind of heavy. Yeah, super supervisors. Now, the fact that that middle piece of granite is gone, you know, nobody will ever know because Raken isn't alive to tell us whether that was an artistic decision because it does become a focal point and maybe he wanted the um, focus to be on the men and on the process rather than that heavy piece of granite. And it's up to you whether you think that's, uh, you know, which one works better. I think it wor for me it works better that this big piece is gone. Yeah. Maybe they wanted to show more. Yeah, and that does sh that does show up. The, look at that. Whoops, that quarry wall. It, you can really get a sense of all of the uh, harvesting that has taken place up to that point. So, uh, so that's so that's where we end up with that with that one. The final submission is um, 12 feet long by six feet high, which is pretty big. The last bit in the post office that exists now. I think so. I'm not. Sh I'm not positive. I have to say, I also found two different listings for the dimensions of this one. I'm just going with one. I, I picked one. Where is it? Um, this is in the Wolfsonian Museum, which is part of the Florida International University in um, Miami. And uh, we are going to have a hands-on. Mrs. Weiss is going down to uh, check that out when she goes to Florida. And she will go in and see it and come back and report to us. Um, Thirteen men became twelve in this uh, final one. One of the Derricks is gone. Um, you know, so I do, I do think that that shows the progression that the artist did. So what happened? <laughs> Pearl Harbor comes. 
all the commissions that were given to the art or that would have been given to artists that had not been given are canceled as the war effort speeds up or even maybe starts. The artists sign up to serve. Westerly does not get its mural, but it, whoops, but it kept its beautiful post office. <laughs> and, and I think that that's really, you know, that's really important. Um, do we want this gorgeous post office or do we want the mural? So I would, since I knew nothing about this, there was a book that was tremendously helpful called Wall to Wall, Post Office Mural in the Great Depression, or murals probably that's supposed to be. National Archives were wonderful about sending digital images. Um, Westerly Library, of course, helped me with the Westerly Sun articles. Susan Sullivan Bracado provided the photograph of her grandfather and the letterhead, which we think is age appropriate. And Joe Kaduri helped with the historic postcards and, of course, the internet. So thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Ellen, which one did you like? You know, I looked at these so often I really don't have a... I like... Oh, come on. That's such an obvious question. I love the railroad engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I don't think I had a favorite. It's a good question, Bruce, but I don't, I don't think I had a favorite. Jan? Well, what about having the, the mural put in the postcards? I think that would be sort of great. So we'll delegate you when you're down there. See if they'll give it to us for the post office. I don't know. We don't know. Uh, but but there's, a, there's about 20 different studies, you know, figure studies and so forth that they have there. So, so they have the whole history of the statue. Uh, yeah, so I think, so I don't know. I'm imagining they must have been in Raikin's possession and somebody gave them to somebody who gave them to the museum. Jim? Thing I'll say, if you haven't been to the New London Post Office, there are wonderful views yeah. of the sailing industry. The railroad. The railroad. Yeah. All righty. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget Brenda's and John's. I don't wonder why we have a lot of this Well, maybe I can call you did it. I did it. Very good. I may never talk again, but...